Hey guys, this is Joe from Analog Archive back with another video. Today's video is going to be the finds for the month of January. Um, this month continued to find a lot more free jazz uh, and just exploring different artists that uh, I hear on albums. Um, good kind of range of stuff. Um, so we'll get started. First one, uh, Masada Joe Thomas. This is uh, on Groove Merchant, I think from late, uh, mid-70s, 1975, is a, like a jazz funk. Uh, Joe Thomas was a saxophone player, just great jazz funk, um, really, really great, cheaper one as well. So if you do see this one, definitely worth grabbing. Um, I've had really good luck with Groove Merchant, so definitely a great uh, one that I didn't really, I had seen this, the cover before, didn't really know what it was but was really uh, excited when I heard it that it was it was just unbelievable uh, next one uh, another Sun Ra one um, only have a few this was called the other side of the Sun uh, this is on the um, sweet earth label um, I'm not familiar with this I had never seen this before um, just kind of kind of this this brownish label to it um, again I don't know anything about the label but um, really great late 70s Sun Ra um, never seen this record before I am intrigued if uh, anybody else has this like if like Dave uh, VC ambassador if he has this record but um, really great um, line up to it as well. You still have John Gilmore, Marshall Allen. Um, you've got Eddie Gale on the trumpet and um, uh, June Tyson's on the vocals, which I think she appears on some of the Sun Ra albums, but um, cool one, not super expensive, um, but a really uh, great one that I am excited to have. So that's that. So it's a, a recent find, um, got this actually, this was on the, the Discogs page at Record Archive, and this had been on there for a while, and I had streamed it a few times and finally pulled the trigger on it when I had went to Rochester uh, this last time. Great early 70s, Pharaoh Sanders. Uh, you you don't have the, um, the vocals in the same way that you did on some of the other ones, like Leon Thomas is not on this album, um, but just a great spiritual free jazz one, um, really great cover to it as well. So, um, a really great one. Very happy to have that. These next few, actually, these next three are all from, um, two different Angry Mom eBay auctions. So this first one is, uh, His Majesty King Funk Grant Green, slowly closing in on having all of Grant Green's uh, Sessions as a Leader. Um, this is his one album that he had on Verve from 1965. Uh, you've got him on the guitar. Candido is on conga and bongo. Ben Dixon drums. Harold Vick is on the tenor sax. Um, and he actually plays the flute on one of the tracks as well, even though it doesn't sh uh, say that. And then Larry Young is on the organ. This is a very uh, soul jazz type session. Um, him kind of moving away from that sound that you had with with uh with blue note and getting more into eventually where he's gonna go when he returns to blue note uh with the jazz funk sound um it's really just him on the guitar and then larry young on the organ um but a really really great one if you like soul jazz definitely a great one to find and this is one that compared to a lot of grant green's other albums is definitely uh gonna be cheaper so um, a great one thank you angry mom um, great grading and very happy to have that uh, as I had been looking for it for a while, and so very happy to have it. Uh, next two are by the same artist, so this one's Melvin Sparks Spark Plug. It's from 70, I think 1971. Uh, this is on Prestige on the green label that you see in the 70s. Great jazz funk. Uh, Melvin Sparks, a, an amazing guitar player. Um, he had some work in the 60s. Um, on a few Blue Note albums as a sideman, um, but this is uh, one of his early albums as a leader, just great uh, sound. You've got Virgil Jones also on the trumpet, Grover Washington, tenor sax, Reggie Roberts, organ, 
Leon Spencer is on uh, one of the tracks on Oregon as well. And then Idris Muhammad is on the drum. So great lineup. Um, these are getting tougher to find, but if you ever do see Melvin Sparks, any of his albums on Prestige are amazing um, and worth having. So that's one. Uh, this one, probably one of his more uh, well-known ones, at least especially based off of the cover. This one's called Aquila. Uh, you've got a little bit larger of a lineup. Leon uh, Spencer's also on the organ and piano, just like you saw in the last one. Idris Muhammad's on drums. Buddy Caldwell's on percussion, Virgil Jones is on trumpet, Sonny Fortune alto sax, Frank West tenor sax, Ernie, Trump, uh, Ernie Royal trumpet, George Coleman alto sax, Dave Hubbard tenor sax and flute, and Hubert Laws is on the flute. Um, obviously not on the same tracks. A um, few of them feature on three of the tracks, and then there's some that only feature on like one or maybe two tracks. So a great one, another jazz and jazz funk um, really, both of these were very, uh, uh, came in in very great condition, so I'm very happy to have these. Again, if you ever find any of the Melvin Sparks albums on Prestige, definitely grab them. Next one, I uh, get back to some Blue Note, so this is Point of Departure, Andrew Hill. Uh, great one, uh, one of his early albums, I think this is his, um, fourth album, um, at least based off of it's on the back. Um, had a few in kind of quick succession. But you've got Kenny Dorham, trumpet, Eric Dolphy, alto sax, flute, bass, clarinet, Joe Henderson, tenor sax, Andrew Hills on the piano, Richard Davis, bass, Anthony Williams, drums. Incredible lineup. Um, more of the kind of free jazz avant-garde type lineup, um, especially Eric Dolphy, uh, Richard Davis, Anthony Williams, and then You've got some players that, uh, especially Joe Henderson, was kind of exploring that more modal post-bop type sound, which I think this is kind of in that lane. A um, little avant, it, is, it does have an avant-garde sound to it as well. It's definitely not free in any um, regard, but um, a really great one all around. Really great horn playing. Ten, uh, Kenny Dorham is really great. Eric Dolphy, Joe Henderson, both great on the saxophone. So um, great one. This one was... Uh, a, um, this one was released as a classic series uh, in the last year, so definitely worth grabbing. Um, great Andrew Hill one, definitely, especially if you're trying to explore some of the avant-garde stuff on um, Blue Note, definitely a great one there. Next one I was very excited about, just listen to this one a few days ago, this is Chico Freeman, No Time Left. Uh, great free jazz, uh, this is from the late 70s, 79 on the Black Saint label, um, really great label to it. Um, I'll show that just cause it's probably one of my favorite labels, especially the A side, just the colors that go with it. Um, and just a really, really great label all around. Um, the stuff that they put out, free jazz, post bop, modal type stuff in the late seventies. Um, like Billy Harper was on Black Saint as well. Um, this one's a pretty cheap one. So it's like, I think like maybe $12, $15, something like that. Um, I don't, yeah, it doesn't say on it, but um, not familiar with the lineup, um, but just a really great saxophone performance by Chico Freeman. Um, really great cheap heat as well. So again, this one's no time left. It's on the Black Saint label. I think this was reissued. Um, there was like a few pressings of this around that late 70s time, but again, great one if you do see that. I'll do another, got the other, another Chico Freeman this month. This is uh, The Outside Within. This is on Indian Navigation. I had talked about in my, uh, I think, the vinyl tag video about uh, the fact that I was wanted to explore Indian Navigation in 2023. So um, kind of continuing with, with that, trying to pick up some more. Um, but you've got uh, Chico Freeman, tenor sax, bass, clarinet. Jack Dejanet on the drum, Cecil McBee, bass, John Hicks, piano. So all in all, a really great lineup um, and uh, a really great album is overall. Um, haven't had a chance to listen to this one. Have streamed it before I bought it and uh, was really, uh, really enjoyed what I heard. So a great one. Excited to check that one out. 
continuing on, uh, this one was one I wasn't familiar with. Uh, this is uh, Mail Waldron Quintet. Uh, sorry, Mail Waldron with the Steve Lacey Quintet. So the great uh, pianist Mail Waldron dating back to the 50s. Uh, this is a 70s record, um, I think early 70s, like 72, 73, on the America Records label out of France. So you've got Mail Waldron piano, Steve Lacey alto sax, Steve Potts alto sax, Kent Carter bass, Noel McGee drums, and Irene A.B. AB on the cello. Um, just a free jazz type uh, session. Steve Lacey, um, as he kind of became known as uh, the years went on, especially as you got into the 70s, free jazz um, sound, and this is a really great one. Um, not super expensive, but uh, if you do see it, a cool one. Again, never never heard of this one before seeing it, so it um, was a great one to pick up. Continuing on, just got a few more left. This is uh, Albert Eiler, Volume 1. Um, this was uh, recorded in France in 1970, in July of 1970. Uh, it was only put out originally in France in the early 70s, and I think there was like a Japanese pressing around that, that time as well, early 70s. This is a 2002 pressing in the U.S. This is actually like the first and I think really only U.S. pressing of it on the label Water, which when I looked it up, it was um, a label that was sometimes affiliated with Four Men with Beards, which kind of scared me a bit just because Four Men with Beards has uh, not a great reputation when it comes to uh, kind of the time and the quality of putting out the records. A lot of the stuff is just digital or even like CD to vinyl. Um, this was a live recording, as I said, in France. And I don't know what the source material for this is. It does say that it was licensed from the Albert Eiler estate. So I'm not sure if that meant the tapes were used or not, but um, in any case, it sounds amazing. Sound quality is really good, especially for a, a live recording. Um, wasn't really sure what to expect, but a really great one. Um, have to find volume two as well. Would like to find an original of that, but um, looking to find more Albert Eiler this year as well. So this was a great one, great free jazz. Uh, sound to that. Last few. So this is Ascension. John Coltrane uh, came out uh, 66, recorded in 65. I think it was like June 65. Uh, you've got obviously Coltrane on uh, tenor, Elvin Jones drums, Freddie Hubbard's on the trumpet, Marion Brown is on the alto sax, McCoy Tyner is on the piano, uh, Art Davis is on the bass, along with Jimmy Garrison, so you've got kind of a dual bass. Uh, Archie Shep, Pharaoh Sanders, both on tenor sax. Um, John Jakai is also uh, on the alto, and then Dewey Johnson's on the trumpet. So you've got quite a horn, uh, heavy lineup to it. Uh, two, two different editions of it. Interesting thing about this is actually the fact that... Um, they got this at the Bob shop and it actually, I don't know if the person that bought this was able to track down both volume one and volume two, but this has both edition one and edition two to it. So just a quick story about that. Edition one was the original uh, take that was released. It was like the second take of the recording. Shortly after it was released, Coltrane had expressed the fact that he uh, actually liked the first take better and so they re-released the album as edition two which shows up actually in the dead wax it says actually edition two um as well so edition one is is a lot harder to find just because there was only a limited run just in 66 when it came out and then really all subsequent pressings i think until uh maybe somewhat recently uh or even it might have been an international pressing went back to that uh, first, or that, sorry, the edition one or the, the second take of it. So this has both edition one and edition two. I've only listened to the edition two, uh, which again was the one that was preferred by Coltrane. Uh, that one was in better condition than edition one, so I haven't had a chance to listen to that, but just a uh, really 
energetic, very powerful free jazz sound to it. Definitely not an easy listen, but um, I, I really enjoyed it the first listen, but definitely uh, pretty heavy when it comes to it. So Ascension, John Coltrane, very familiar one. Um, this one I was very happy to find. This is The Cats, uh, Tommy Flanagan. You've got Tommy Flanagan, John Coltrane, Adris Suleiman, Kenny Burrell, Doug Watkins, Louis, Louis Hayes. Uh, this was originally uh, released in, I think, uh, 19, maybe 60. Uh, around, yeah, I think it was 1960. Um, and this is the status pressing from, like, a few years after that, like, 62, 63. I might be wrong with the year. It might have been a little bit later. Um, 82, 17. No, that probably was early 60, 61. And then this was just the status pressing on the orange label. Um, a lot of those status pressings are plagued with uh, just surface noise because they're all on recycled. There are a lot of them are on recycled vinyl, but this one was uh, not on recycled vinyl. So very happy to have this. Um, a real somewhat budget copy compared to what the originals go for, several hundred dollars at least, maybe even more, maybe getting up into almost um, the four figures for it. But great copy. Um, very happy to have this. Uh, great, great Hard bops uh, session, so very happy to have that. Last two, very excited about this. This is one of my favorite finds of the month. This is Saga of the Outlaws, Charles Tyler. Charles Tyler was a great saxophone player dating back to the 60s on ESP disc. Uh, he worked with like Albert Eiler, and he also had a few sessions himself on ESP disc. Uh, this is from the late 70s, 1978, on the Nessa label um really really great one great free jazz and um just yeah overall just a really really great sound to it very happy to have this again this was another uh kind of blind buy this month quite a few of the ones that i found this month uh, i was not familiar with before and was very excited to find this and uh, have this in the collection and then uh, finally one of my favorite finds also for the month uh, bells albert eiler there's like eight or ten different variations of the vinyl along with the cover jacket I uh, kind of design not design but the color of the jacket along with the vinyl and this one is a kind of gold or yellow colored vinyl um, it's a shame that unfortunately the the label someone put a sticker over it so it's hard to kind of see the image it's supposed to be a picture of Albert Eiler um, just kind of like his uh, a face, uh, kind of up close of him playing the, the saxophone. Um, but this is in really, really great condition. ESP disc, uh, definitely a lot of the ones I found have been plagued with just being rough condition, scratched up, beat up. Um, to find this one in really great condition, very happy to have this. Um, and again, continuing to find ESP disc. Uh, that's another goal for this year. So very happy to have this Albert Eiler. It's a shame there's only one side, just like 20, I think it's like 20, 22 minutes of music on it. But um, hoping that there was more, but it is what it is. So very happy to have this one um, in the collection as well. So those are the finds for the month of January. Um, please put in the comments what you enjoyed Um and uh, if you have not subscribed already, uh, please think about liking and subscribing. Um, and I will see you in the next vinyl video. Bye.